Push my button now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the um, Clackamas County uh, Board of Commissioners business meeting, December 1st, 2016. And the first thing on the agenda is, of course, Mr. Krupp to check and see if we're all here. Well, good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. We have uh, today uh, a very lengthy agenda. To yeah, for the right. So, uh, we are joined this morning uh, from the County Council's office uh, by Mr. Uh, Chris Story and, uh, as always, our clerk to the board, Mary Rathke. Commissioner Bernard? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Savas? Here. Chair Ludlow? Here. Commissioner Schrader is on a trade mission. Would you all please uh, rise and join, me in the, uh, join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a presentation first, Mr. Krupp. Yes, uh, we have a presentation of the Tourism Development Grant Awards for 2016-17 and also recognition of awards given to tourism staff and programs. And our Director of uh, Tourism and Cultural Affairs, Danielle Cowan, will uh, introduce the staff members in the program. No, you don't have to do anything. Good morning, Mr. Chief. Oops. Good morning, Commissioners. Danielle Cowan. I'm the Executive Director for Tourism in the County. And with me today is Aaron Leersman, and he's our Development Specialist. Uh, along, as, along with uh, Jared Lyman, who is our social media uh, specialist. So uh, welcome to them. Today we wanted to um, uh, give you some uh, information about the 2016-17 grants uh, that we have just awarded through the development program. Uh, this year we were able to um, award about uh, $50,000 more than what we did the previous year because our revenues have been so strong. Uh, we had projected uh, 4.2, and we just got our final numbers, uh, and it has actually been 4.5, so we've, we've done pretty well. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Aaron, who was uh, one of the key persons involved with um, running the, the development grant program this year, and uh, he will give the details about the various awards. All right, so if we'll start with the first slide there. Um, like Danielle just said, we actually increased the funding this year uh, by 50,000 because of the TRT increase, um, which we kind of felt, or the TDC felt that that was um, integral into actually reinvesting that back into the tourism community. Uh, the limits as far as what is allowed with the tourism development grants, you have a maximum ask of $100,000. Uh, you can do a minimum of 5,000. Um, we try to support all three pillars of tourism, so that's the agritourism, outdoor recreation, and cult arts, culture, and heritage. Uh, and then eligible groups, you have your public, private, and nonprofit organizations are all eligible to apply for the grant. So the first one there at the top, uh, we awarded $20,000 to uh, the Museum of the Oregon Territory, Moot, uh, for their genealogy research lab. Uh, this was one... This was one that kind of excited us because it actually created a new tourism asset 
Um, and it was also something, if you read back on the Clackamas County Heritage and Cultural Tourism Development Strategic Plan, uh, they did identify genealogy tourism as a ripe opportunity for tourism in the county. So when they came to us with this ask, uh, it was almost a no-brainer for us. Um, so we were very pleased to award them that. Uh, below that, the Willamette Falls Heritage Area Market Research Strategic Plan and Implementation Plan. Uh, they were awarded $60,000. This is already a state heritage area, but we're also currently being reviewed for designation as a national heritage area. Um, this is going to fund the assessment of tourism assets within the heritage area and evaluate the economic opportunities that could benefit communities and citizens within the area, as well as develop a strategic plan for capitalizing on those tourism opportunities. Go to the next slide. So at the very top there, the Sandy Ridge Trailhead improvements. Uh, over the past years, we've noticed that parking has become an issue there. Um, as it increases in popularity, uh, a lot of people not only in state but out of state are starting to recognize that as one of the major trailhead um, areas for mountain biking. So the BLM approached us um, for a major project. Uh, they were awarded $80,000. This is going to be used for trailhead improvements to the Sandy Ridge Trail System. Uh, it's going to increase capacity for parking. I think they're going to increase by about 180 parking spaces. They're going to add event space there. Um, we got record of them from this past year. They've already had about, I think, 35 events at that place. So this is going to increase that. It's going to give them an actual space to do that at. Um, and let me see here. But yeah, so it's basically a huge multifaceted project. Um, and it's just going to increase and bring more availability to people, again, not only in state, but out of state as well to use this. Uh, below that, the Canby Bike Hub, uh, where they were awarded $12,000. This was by the Canby Livability Co Coalition. Uh, this is going to, the funds that we're going to donate for them or grant them is for a covered bicycle hub. Um, they're also going to put in a bike fix-it station, concrete padding, informational kiosk. Uh, this is going to be a part of a larger plan to, pro to promote bicycle tourism in Canby. Uh, the bicycle hub is near the Canby Ferry, which is a popular attraction for cyclists visiting the area as well. Next slide. So the next award is uh, Bike Friendly Amenities for the Willamette Street in West Lynn. They were awarded $5,000. Um, Westland's historic Willamette Main Street, uh, we, they received those funds to install bike racks on Willamette Street uh, that add to the character of the historic Willamette District as part of a larger vision for encor encouraging cycle tourism in the area. Below that, you'll see river tourism at Willamette Falls. Uh, we Love Clean Rivers was granted $40,000. Uh, that's actually going to be used to answer technical questions that must be addressed for a water or portage trail to be incorporated near Willamette Falls. Uh, currently, they are working with Metro to define those technical questions uh, concerning the Portage Trail. Next up, we have the Rodeo Walk of Fame in Malala. They were awarded $12,000. Uh, the Rodeo Walk of Fame, where did it go? Oh, it's at the bottom. Uh, this was uh, the Malala Area Chamber of Commerce. They received the funds to expand their Rodeo Walk of Fame. Uh, this builds on Malala's rodeo heritage and the reputation of the Malala Buckaroo. Uh, the city of Malala incorporated this Walk of Fame bronze plaques to the main street, um, which improvements on the main street are currently underway. Below that, we have the Clackamas Cultural Plan. Uh, this was granted to the Clackamas County Cultural Coalition in the amount of $20,000. Uh, this was going to be for hiring a professional consultant to guide for public outreach and engagement process that will inform the updating of the cultural plan for Clackamas County. This was something we felt was needed. The last time they actually did a feasibility study was 12 years ago, so they were definitely due. Oh, wow. Is there a slide after that? I believe that that was it. Uh, this was a, uh, a effort that was undertaken by a uh, panel that worked with us from outside uh, partners and citizens, as well as staff, and then was approved by the board of, uh, by the Tourism Development Council uh, at their November meeting. So, if there are any questions, we'll aren't any questions, we'll move on. Next, thank you, Aaron. So the other thing we wanted to do was just acknowledge some of the efforts of the staff at tourism. And, and uh, I also wanted to point out one that was recently awarded to and hasn't been yet received by partners, uh, by a partner into the Oregon Trail, which isn't on here. We have recent notice from um, uh, by Media America as 100 best fan favorite in Oregon out of 9,000 
uh, applicants in Oregon for that designation, uh, our own End of the Oregon Trail um, uh, was awarded uh, one of Oregon's 100 best, so congratulations to them. Uh, the, the one that uh, we wanted to uh, acknowledge today was an uh, award received this past August at, from the U.S. Travel Association uh, in Florida. Uh, it was one for the effort by Jared Lyman and staff for Bigfoot's Dream Date. Uh, it was, uh, the ESTO is the National Organization for Travel, and uh, congratulations, it was a big effort. Social media is important to us and important to the industry, and I'm so proud that we have a team that just outshines everyone in, in, in that area and in, in many areas. So congratulations to Jared for, and his team for pulling that together. And uh, the other one was also given to Jared uh, at, in October, and that was for uh, the Travel and Tourism Research Alliance. This is a global organization, and he was recognized also coincidentally in Florida, uh, where they held their national um, conference this year. And uh, it's the J. Desmond Slattery Professional Marketing Award, which is an extreme honor. And I'm, again, very proud, and as the county should be, for. Uh, uh, the effort by Jared and, and staff for achieving this remarkable goal. So congratulations, Jared. And then uh, two others we just wanted to mention as well um, came forward uh, from our public relations. And as for those of you who don't know, public relations we often call earned or free media. It's a place where you, if you work with the media, you, you hope to get a story uh, or a placement. And it's not, often it's something you can't ever afford to buy, certainly not with our budget. And so you can see the, um, the revenues that that generated. Uh, uh, the PR program under Annie Austin uh, was recognized for two gold awards by, again, a national organization. And you can see the difference in her um, for the, the value added from the circulation and, uh, and the ad value itself from uh, 14, 15 to 16. 1516, and uh, the impression. So this is a remarkable achievement. Uh, th through her work, uh, we have uh, $6.7 million in value in advertising, which is truly amazing. So again, just wanted to recognize those efforts. And um, uh, one other one, uh, through a lot of effort, again, by Annie Austin in her travels and working with media, we had this um, amazing placement in LA Travel Magazine, which is almost impossible. We certainly could not have purchased it, uh, but this is the main spread, and it really um, hones in on all we have to offer here in Oregon's Mount Hood territory. And you can see the beautiful picture there of Vela Catalana, one of our favorite uh, wineries um, just outside of the Canby, Oregon City area. So uh, basically that's it, and thank you very much for the opportunity to share this with you today. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, why don't you uh, come up here and I think we have somebody to take a photo. Yeah, we do. Commissioners, let's go down. I, I want to be with that bird. Well, all righty. Yeah, um, you know, if you think about the Mount Hood Territory itself, a key theme in Clackamas County for tourism, what an outstanding uh, promotion it has been. Uh, and Clackamas County certainly has the majority of uh, Mount Hood from the Tri-County area, at least. And, uh, 
It is a great destination. Certainly recreational opportunities abound. All right, we have uh, now citizens' communication. We have one card, Mr. Les Poole. Good morning. Well, it's good news for tourism. And uh, I grew up in Oregon, and I'm definitely an Oregon tourist. Uh, I was reminded that my mountain bike's been hanging up in the garage for too long. Uh, I wanted to just mention a couple of things today about and some retrospect about the election and not, not, not personal candidates or who won, but about the issues because whether you like what I say or not, I'm here about the issues. You don't hear me down here talking about my backyard or the neighbor's fence. I'm down here because of the issues. So when I look at the election, um, I look at the issues, and, and one of the biggest ones was Measure 97. And uh, two-thirds of the folks said no to a sales tax. And let's face it, no matter how you packaged it, you know, we, we, we had 40-plus million dollars go into that battle. And it was basically to find out that, yeah, we're fiscally in trouble in a lot of ways, but a sales tax isn't going to fly in Oregon. And I say that here because you folks have to deal with that reality in Salem. And, and I truly believe that uh, some of the campaigns, regardless of the, which ones I could go research, if you look at some of the campaigns, you'll see folks had trouble getting money because there was this huge, huge investment, not only uh, in Measure 97, but in a couple other big races. Uh, so. Um, here we are with the same problem we had before we had this Measure 97 issue. And I believe that, you know, like I'm from Gladstone, we had a marijuana tax, we had a county marijuana tax, we had, you know, and I think folks overlook stuff, and I think sometimes when it comes to the, to the uh, lesser issues, they don't vote for them. They, they've said no to 97, they feel overtaxed, so here, so here we are, moving into next year, and the commission is going to inherit the same problem we've had with roads and with trying to manage money. And uh, I, I just hope that some, something can be done about uh, the road situation. Um, I don't fault the commission for where we're at. Um, I was troubled by the lack of attention to roads before Lynn Peterson even got here. And now we've got this sign is still in the back of the room that we still have to address. So uh, as always, I appreciate the opportunity to talk, and I'm looking forward to providing whatever input I can as the new year arises. Thank you. Thank you, Les. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Krepp, we have a board discussion item. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, this is a uh, consideration of a resolution that would adopt the expansion for the North Urban Clackamas County Enterprise Zone. Uh, Cindy Hagen from our Business and Economic Development Program is here to present this to you. already on. Oh, thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Again, my name is Cindy Hagan. I'm with your business and economic development team here at the county and am uh, also the enterprise zone manager for the North Urban Clackamas County Enterprise Zone. <coughs> so we are here today uh, with a resolution to expand the current uh, urban, excuse me, the current North Clackamas Urban uh, Clackamas County Enterprise Zone, and it, it will also include the areas in the city of Milwaukee and properties in Happy Valley and unincorporated uh, Clackamas County as well. The zone has been in place since 1997, 
and um, was expanded in 2008 to include Happy Valley. And again, this enterprise zone is a tax abatement opportunity for new investment for industrial and traded sector businesses within the zone. So that's promoting new investments in the county and is one of our few uh, business retention, expansion, and recruitment tools that we have in our um, quiver, if you will, for the daily work that we do. So with me today, I also have representatives from the city of Milwaukee and Happy Valley, should there be any questions on this item. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask you a question that I asked also when we talked about this in our policy sessions, and that is, in this particular area, uh, evidently, there's going to be an urban renewal district as well, so in, in some of this area that's covered by this enterprise zone. So I, I suppose it might depend on what comes first, the chicken or the egg, so to speak, whether it's an urban renewal district place, put in place or the enterprise zone. Are you familiar with both of those in this situation and which one will come first? I am, and we had uh, Barb Cartmill, uh, the Director of Development and Transportation that was also with us at the policy session. And so the way that this would roll out is the enterprise zone would benefit the business owner for the tax abatement, and then the urban renewal benefits then the property owner in that scenario. And some of them may be the same. I'm correct. Gonna, yes, to, correct. That is correct. Yeah, I think the, what we ended up uh, determining was the urban renewal, if they, all e things were equal, came first, so to speak. Is that that is my understanding. Okay. Has that urban renewal district been formed and put into place yet, or is it still in preliminary stages? You don't know that? My understanding is still in preliminary stages. It is. Yes. Okay. Good enough. All right. Mr. Bernard, Commissioner Bernard. So I am abstaining from this because according to the map, I own some property in this area. All right. So, um, clarifications or questions, Commissioner? All right. Motion, please. I move we approve the resolution for the expansion of the North Urban Clackamas County Enterprise Zone. Second. All right. Motion by Commissioner Smith, seconded by Commissioner Savas. Further discussion? And for those who are curious about this, yes, I think it was Tuesday. Um, <laughs> not sure which Tuesday, but we definitely have discussed this. If you want to know more about this particular program, then listen in on that session. It's on a Tuesday. It's called a policy session, and uh, it gets more in depth than what we're going to go through today. So any further discussion? Are we ready for the question? Mary. Commissioner Bernard. I'm not voting on this. Abstain. Abstain, abstain would abstain. be nice. Stay abstain. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Ludlow. Aye, passes three, actually zero, because he said he wouldn't vote. So an abstain doesn't count in that particular situation. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, this is a rare situation, and the only time I've ever seen it since I've been here in four years. We have no consent agenda. I feel like robbed. Mary's not going to read it into the record this time, right? So um, we will not, but we always have, and we must have, of course, the county administrator update. I certainly do, and I've got a couple of items to share with you, of course. Uh, we uh, received uh, another compliment uh, for one of our staffers in transportation and development. Uh, Jody, who's a resident of Clackamas County, took the time earlier this week to call our Building Codes Division and express her appreciation for excellent customer service that she received. She was reporting that uh, Kathy Crutchfield, who is uh, one of our permit specialists, provided her with outstanding customer service and was kind, nice, and extremely helpful. So I wanted to thank Jody for sharing that with us and also offer a big thanks to Kathy for demonstrating our core values of spirit and professionalism uh, with our customers. And then, I uh, see, I, I had I thought I saw Greg Geist in the audience a little earlier, uh, but I'll mention this other item. Uh, our uh, Tri-City Wastewater Treatment uh, Facility is one of a few uh, throughout Oregon uh, that has been selected for continued participation in the Energy Trust of Oregon's Strategic Energy Management Program. Uh, this program trains staff to make our operations more efficient to reduce costs and ease the demand on uh, systems that serve our customers. 
And as of the middle of November, these efforts have saved more than 1.1 million kilowatts this year. Uh, as a result, we're expecting, and I can't quite tell you how much, but we are expecting uh, that Energy Trust will present a check to our Water Environment Services Department uh, for its energy savings sometime in January. That means we get paid uh, for reducing our energy costs. So keep it up, uh, Greg and the West staff. Very appreciative of that. And that's what I have to share with you. All right. Thank you. And time for Commissioner's communication. We'll start with Commissioner Bernard. So last night I attended the joint city uh, discussion on uh, Tri-Cities and CCSD1 um, forming a, a new district uh, called WES, and it's a 190. I thought staff was absolutely outstanding uh, that um, it was so obvious to me that this, not only the savings that would occur through that partnership, but the very low rate increase that would be required to fund the project was very well demonstrated. And I think that uh, even though there were some cities who originally fought the idea, it, it looks like there, it's, a, it's a go. <laughs> and what will come now is a discussion on governance, frankly, and that would probably be of an, a, a type of an advisory committee, whatever, we're just starting to look at that. But I thought it was a very well done meeting and staff did an outstanding job. <coughs> we are uh, moving into the budget process. We had a quarterly meeting, some updates on our revenues and uh, they're, they're substantial, but there are also substantial increases in costs, uh, one of those being PERS. Uh, others are just the, you know, the cost of doing business has, has risen. So in the end, we have a pretty flat budget and not a lot of room to do a lot of things. Um, and I think Les mentioned that we still, we failed on the gas tax increase, and we need to have a discussion about what we're gonna do about that, because frankly, we can't just let it go. Um, people in Clackamas County evidently think their roads are a lot better than they really are, uh, but um, it just need to do a little more driving around, you'll find out that's not necessarily true. And it's about life and safety too, so I think we need to talk about you know, what we're gonna do about that. And we're not talking about building new roads, even though we need new roads. Uh, we're talking about maintaining the assets we have. So that'll be a discussion that we have uh, with the community in the future. And there are other options we'll be considering. <coughs> so with that, uh, I'm gonna move on to Paprika. Uh, so Paprika is one of the dogs in our dog shelter. She's a senior pit bull mix that is just as sweet as uh, can be. She has been patiently waiting for a perfect family to adopt her and knows they, that they are coming soon. She loves to go for walks and be by your side at all times. She may be senior by definition, but this gal still has a lot of pep. <laughs> She's recommended to be placed in a house with children over six years old. So be sure and stop by and visit her at our Clackamas County Dog Services Shelter. Uh, you can visit them on the web at www.clackamas.us forward slash dogs or call 503-655-8628. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Uh, well, thank you. You know, um, you know, I've talked a lot about it from my farm life and we seems like we finished one harvest and we're on to another. We're in the middle of Christmas tree harvest now. And we've had trucks on the farm loading them out and it's a hustle and bustle. Uh, and so that's what we're doing now. And we're, we're transporting them to all sections of the United States except really for the East Coast. And uh, so I'm busy doing that lately. And I like to honor, in, out in Colton, uh, you know, Colton is a, you know, it's not even a city. It's a, a, a place in rural Clackamas County who the people guard their independence fiercely 
And, but you know, it's a great school district, and the school district has had its challenges, but the people who are teachers and administrators there are so dedicated to uh, uh, their uh, students out here. I just want to honor Brennan Olson, is back taking, uh, he graduated uh, from Colton uh, several years ago, and he is now a um, West Point graduate. And you know, it's one thing to even get nominated to go to one of our military academies. It's quite another thing to be a graduate with high honors. And so I want to honor Brennan Olson and thank you for his service to our country. And uh, I, we expect uh, very good things uh, to be moving away. Um, he uh, had high SAT scores, uh, SAT scores, and uh, he was in their civil engineering program. And I'm sure as he grows, uh, into uh, public life and civil life. He will be a great asset to this country. And thank you for the people of Colton for raising really great kids. Thank you. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, uh, I think last week I mentioned uh, my uh, trip to Seattle for transportation purposes to look at what they have done to um, increase um, uh, transportation funding to solve congestion problems. And um, last week, I forgot to mention that we cut the ribbon on the Tolbert Overpass, which is the last project that we really completes the um, Sunrise project. So I want to take this time to um, thank our staff and ODOT and our commissioners for supporting this project and past commissions as well, because it took quite a, quite a lift to get this project underway. Though it is just phase one and there are several phases to go, um, it was a again a, a great day to cut the ribbon on that and I had to just think about how many projects some of the projects we have done recently um, part of that project was completing um, rebuilding uh, Lawnfield Avenue uh, we built Minuteman Way and we built a lot of projects around that area to make this to, facilita to facilitate the new routing for the Sunrise project uh, we opened up Monterey last year um, and that connects um, 82nd Avenue around the town center to Fuller Road. And we've done a considerable amount of sidewalk projects uh, in Happy Valley and Gladstone and, and a lot of areas around the county. So despite um, you know, some of the uh, limits of transportation funding, we have managed to do a few projects. And I know we also have paved uh, quite, a, quite a bit of roads um, and fixed a lot of road uh, surfaces in the last uh, couple of years, so I want to applaud staff for finding the resources and, uh, and also again thank my commissioners for supporting some um, extra monies uh, to make that happen and turn that into a reality. And uh, that's what I have for today. Wow, this, is, this may be a world's record here. Um, well, I too uh, attended that meeting last night. It's an unusual meeting if you think about it because our staff, our very able staff at uh, WES, has, uh, had been making the rounds and visiting every city that's involved in uh, CCSD1, Clackamas County Service District Number 1 sewer, as well as Tri-Cities. And they were able to meet with every city except for Oregon City. And Oregon City has said, let's just wait until after the election. Why? I do not know. However, last night was after the election, and instead of Oregon City getting their first presentation, it was all three of the cities, which was fine. It was very educational and had some good Q&A going on there. But the question of governance came up last night yet again. And if you think about this, um, again, it's 30 years ago, this commission was given the authority over uh, Tri-City Sewerage District. There was a reason for that. The story has been told many times. Uh, this area was in trouble sewer-wise. Now, uh, we believe that the commission, long before I was here, um, made some very strategic and good investments, as well as has CCSD1 and the, to the tune of $93 million in that plant. There are some who say, well, that plant is totally owned by the Tri-City Sewerage District. Well, not quite so. And thus, the partnership, which we formed several weeks ago, a new ORS-190, that would ensure the continuation of this partnership. Now, there are those who would want to break that partnership up and put it asunder simply because of a power grab. Because, as I've said before, and I'll continue to say during my term here, is there should be two things shown uh, if a change of governance, governance is needed. One, that whoever would take over the new governance could ensure the same rates that we could in continuing our operation the way it's going. And the second one is that somehow we have failed in anything. 
Now, there's always personnel situations. You know, a director was let go from Wes, and that seemed to be a great move because look who we've got now, a fantastic, outstanding man, award-winning man named Greg Geist, who did a real good job there last night again, um, listening to um, uh, questions and answering them. So uh, I, I would hope that any discussion of governance would look at other parts of the country, let alone the state of Oregon, as to their successes in combining processes instead of separating them. If you look at the Washington County model, that was 11 different sewerage districts that all came together. Ultimately, the county commissioners still have control, although there is a 15-member advisory body that's made up of cities and, and rate payers. I think we all get lost in the fact that, that we serve rate payers. We don't serve other elected officials. Uh, we, d we serve the people who actually try to flush that and make it go away. And that's the way it should be. But I, I want to emphasize that if there's any change of governance, there better be a darn good reason of it besides just a flat power grab. And that's what's going on right now. So uh, one of the thing uh, I, I always finish on something that I found on the internet otherwise, and I thought this one was totally appropriate. Over 130 police officers died in this calendar year so far. Not one was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom Award last week. Now that's reprehensible. You know, we just heard about one dying last night. Uh, and a lot of these, these people are assassinated. They're not killed in the line of duty. They're assassinated. And you know, where is the outcry, by the way, from our president saying, stop the rioting in the streets. Stop this stuff. Stop killing our cops. And they're killing black ones too, by golly. You know, where is the outrage? It is uh, sad indeed. But, but it's a happy day otherwise. I'm going to make it so. I expect you to do the same. There being no further business before us this day, this meeting is adjourned.